The round 13 means test. Here was I thinking that the images of yesterday were going to be Terry Danaher's fake tan and Hamish Blake's nipples, but <laughs> there was Maynard and Cox and my check, David King, in a result it? that's got ramifications. <laughs> Can you say nipples on air? I think with being male, yes. It's unlike you to be talking like this. It was sort of hard to miss. <laughs> Pull the dress up, Hamish. A brick his thumbs. <laughs> Um, righto, into the means test, our material is good here. The King's Gambit to start before we do the big issue of yesterday's game. What do you want to believe in? Like, how deep is the season? If this is one of those years that no longer has a dominant team, how vivid's your imagination? And if you're a Richmond fan, you're outside the eight, are you believing you can win the flag? If you're a Bulldogs fan and you're 10th, are you believing you can win the flag? How deep could it run from here? Two wins from top to eighth, and 12 teams have a percentage of above 100. I, I can't remember that last time that happened, and someone will have an answer for that. I, I understand that, but it's it's awesome. It's great to watch. It's great to see. Warts and weapons we spoke about last week, and they're never more evident. Every team has a vulnerability. Every team has a, a way they can be beaten, and every team has a way they can get you at the moment. You know, barring the, the the four or five down the bottom of the table, so the contenders they they got issues. They've all got their own little issues, you know, and it's just a matter of what you what you hold you know hold firm with. You know, do you believe in bashing teams at contest? Is it ball movement? Is it defence first? Is it what is it? What is it? And everyone's doing it differently. And yeah, you watch that game yesterday. You come out, and you think, you know what? Coaching matters. The way Craig McRae set that game up yesterday had a massive impact on that game early, particularly the first half. I'm in love with what he's doing at Collingwood. It is it is phenomenal what he's done, really. Mason, he's even getting Mason Cox to fire Jerry. Like it was just it was a, just a great spectacle yesterday, and a, you know every every person you talk to, Carlton friends are over the moon. Collingwood fans are over the moon. Richmond fans are back in the game again. They're thinking, okay, we just got we just got to qualify here. We just got to get a, we just got to get on the grid. You know, Melbourne fans, well, they're still they're still holding the line. We'll be fine. Brisbane fans are saying, hey, we're back. Frio fans, they've been the loudest fans all year, and rightly so. Good on them. So it just it doesn't matter it doesn't matter where you sit. And Geelong have said nothing. Geelong are the, Geelong are just sneaking under the radar every week. And, and probably find themselves in the you know in the top two or three contenders right now. Oh, we probably went a bit early last week with Geelong and Fremantle, and probably lowered Melbourne a little bit. But when you see it yesterday, and you and you you don't recognise it till you see it, and you can't once you see it, you can't stop seeing it. So I, I think that um, I think we're in for a fantastic last ten weeks. All right, so let's get into the big issue of yesterday. Is what do you want to take out of it? It's it's a result that has broad ramifications. Yeah, it does because I think what's when you, when you look at the demons, they've been worked out too strong, been worked out too strong. But so they held Darcy Moore a hundred meters back as the last defender out the back. So there's nothing that was going to slingshot quick against against the Pies, and that's Melbourne's go. The hundred hundreds work work back defensively, and then they all charge. Correct quickly, forwards get forward, open up gaps in behind. The midfielders can work into those gaps, but ultimately your forwards correct really quick. And if you can't go with them, you talk to teams that have played Melbourne and their back six are puncturing late in game. They physically can't do it. Um, so I, I think that the I think the way Craig McRae set up that game gave belief to the group, don't panic. If you can't keep up with your opponent, don't worry, we've got one out the back. It'll be okay. And how and, and more it was on, on rotation. So it, it was terrific to watch. And then all of a sudden, Collingwood started matching. They, they couldn't match Oliver, but they could match the rest in, in, in the contest, in, in clearance and in contested footy. And then you started to think, okay, hang on. This, this is happening here. If they had a kick straight early, they would have beaten by 60 points. They, they would have. Because they, they didn't get any reward early and, and they, they trailed on the scoreboard and you thought, oh, no, it got out to 20 points. You thought, Melbourne is going to do this. They're going to find a way to do this. But if they had, if they had it converted early, it could have got seriously ugly. And, and maybe, maybe, this is the, maybe this is the hit out that Melbourne needed to just, to just lay bare all their problems 
and say, okay, wh- where do we start? So, well, losing games is not really a, not really a problem, but the way in which you're playing and the way in which you lose them or win them is an issue. I mean, Fremantle won the game, and they talk like they lost the game on the weekend. Well, Justin Long, I've never seen a flatter coach <laughs> after a win. So that, that, that's that's what we're talking about today. So where do Melbourne need to go to work immediately? Um, where do they need to go to work? Well, I think everything's failing outside of contest. And we've said this for a little while. Like last year, Daniel Horn and I uh, started this without the footy discussion. And it is the strongest component of any premiership tilt. What you do without the ball as a group, as a team, tells you how far you can go. So Melbourne dominant number one last year. This year, last six, seven weeks, they're not even they're not even in the top ten. I think they're ranked twelfth or thirteenth. Like that that's not them. And everyone says, oh, but Stephen May's yet. No, Stephen May's been there. He's been there. Um, so whether you want to believe it or not is 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 up to yourself. But we've been saying for a while, they've been going at 70% all year. I still think their best is the best. But when was the last time we saw them at their best? So I think they've got to correct their, de- their defensive play first. I still think Lever's got 50% improvement in him. May obviously comes back into that lineup. They're just not the same team at the moment without the footy. Their pressure is really poor. They don't give their back line a chance. So you can move the ball against them. And once you can start to move the ball against teams, you become easy to play against. You're not the same threat. You lose your aura. Now, they, they, looked, they looked impenetrable last year. Didn't matter where you started with the footy. You, you couldn't get through. It's not the same now. So, so teams are saying, okay, well, we, we can get through. So all we've got to do is hold up. Defensively, so they hold another defender. So they make it hard for Melbourne to score. I think Melbourne have scored. I was having a look before. Uh, Fifty-six points. Uh, what is it here? It is here. They've gone 56, 61, 56. Well, they're not numbers of a of a of a title holder, are they? No. So I, I think teams are saying, okay, let's let's just make it harder for them to score, and they'll they'll break. We'll get through. It's not the same team as last year. If you can take last year out of your mind, and just judge twenty twenty two. They are gettable. So so it's game on. It's game on for everyone now. In what Collingwood did yesterday, so Mason Cox is in that bracket of most discussed players in the competition. Mm. His third quarter, so I tell you what I haven't seen before, is the intercept marking he did down back yeah. in, in tandem with with Moore. It was profound. And then by the end, is he was controlling ruck contest because we know that he grows into the idea. He That swagger returns to his game. So he's gone from within season, maybe the most out of form player in the game, <laughs> getting the game to that yesterday, which was a, a match defining quarter. If you keep telling someone they can't play, you'll be proven right. If you keep telling someone they can play, you give them a chance. And Craig McRae has continued with Mason Cox and it's contrary to what everyone else is telling him. What are you bothering for? What are you doing with this guy? You know, it, it, he stuck with him. He stuck with him. And then when he needed him most, he was huge yesterday, wasn't he? Yeah. I, I thought he was the most influential player on the ground. Yeah. And Oliver's had a thousand touches. Yeah, I didn't think Oliver was anywhere near the medal. I know mm. he had his first quarter, yes. The rest of the game, no. I, I, th- I thought, just calling it live, yeah. I thought Cox and Majacek were the two players who determined the result. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought Pendlebury was very good too in, in bursts um, and what he does tends to go on the scoreboard. Now, I thought Mason Cox, so, so they found they found a way to use him. You know, this all this is happening without Brodie Grundy. I mean, we've talked a lot about the role of the ruckman. What, you know, what can you, get, what can you get away with in terms of your next wave ruckman? If your main man's not there, you know, Port Adelaide with the discussion on the weekend, you know, your main man's not there. Can you use Finn Layson and Dixon and you know, Cameron – has has filled that void unbelievably. And then Mason Cox, when it was his turn, like you said, behind the ball. I, I haven't seen him do that before. No, no. I've seen him, we've, seen him, we've all seen him take marks four to centre and have that little strut, that little waltz he does on the way back to having a set shot. But they, they, looked, they looked so alive when he was marking the ball down back. And it, it, it almost looked like for about a 10-minute window there, you, you, it, was, it was like Jeremy McGovern had just put, a, put Mason Cox's jumper on. It was uh, it was terrific. So well done to the coaching group at the at the Pies. They they set that game up. You know they made it look like a Collingwood game. They wanted they wanted to be able to cap punch, 
aggressively, but but def- stay defensively strong. And that's how it looked all day. Did you feel that? You called the game. Yeah, yeah. As they should have been up a quarter time. Mm. There was a litany of six missed chances. And then it was just the, will it get them? Oh, you've blown so many chances. And it got to 23 the first time around. And it got to 20 the second time around. But after that, yeah, it was thrilling. And it feels far reaching. And it is the big issue on our round 13 means test with a lot to work through. The game of... Clayton Oliver, Kingy, and yes. very particularly what that looks like to Craig McRae and his coaching staff. So at halftime, he's had 27 disposals, uh, three inside 50s. He kicked the goal, which was the crumb off the off Max Gorn's, off Max Gorn's tap down, the kick inside 50 from Salem. Three clearances, 12 contested. So he, he he's getting huge numbers. So I think you have to sit back and say, what's the influence on the game? And we talk about this a lot. We've talked about this with Tom Mitchell. Mm-hmm. These these ball winning, the game's set up for the midfielders to accumulate. So how much is he hurting it is the question, isn't it? So Craig McRae decides not to tag him. Everyone's going, well, yeah, how, many, how many possessions does he need to get before you start the tagging? 27 and a half time. And I think that's a great discussion. And, and the fan, for the fans sitting in, in, in the stands, they're thinking, gee, he's had a lot of footy, this guy. You know, when do we put some time into him? So I, I thought it was great. I, I thought it was great to just let it unfold group versus group because Collingwood were on top of clearances and on top with contested footy and giving their forwards great opportunity. So at half time they'd had, they'd had 24 inside 50s, kick three goals, eight. It should have been eight goals, three. So if it was eight goals, three, you're saying, you know, we're comfortable with how the game looks. Yes. So I think that's the argument, isn't it? Yes. Are you happy with how the game looks? Then don't change your midfield mix. Lingy voted the game Cox, Oliver, Majacek, Lloyd, Cox, Oliver, Crisp, and Josh Gablich, Oliver, Dacos, Majacek. Now, there's no right or wrong in this. This is just the beauty's in the eye of the beholder. And that's why you get three, to get a spread of of views on the game. You're not actually looking for consensus in votes. Yeah. But how, how would you have had So it? I would have gone Cox, Majacek, Maynard. Maynard. Yep. And the, the one was transposable. You could have put it through five different hands. Yeah. But I would have, yeah... I would have gone Cox three, my check two, Maynard one. What would you have done? Yeah, I'm a little, I'm, I'm around the edges with you. I would have gone Cox, Pendlebury, and then I would have wrestled with Oliver or or my check for the third. But probably gone, probably gone my check in the end. And Oliver's had a huge day, so it's not he. The, the result's not his fault, but the impact, in my opinion, and and clearly yours. Wasn't there. So he was going to win the game for them in the first quarter. So he's got the medal and we haven't got him in the votes. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yep. It's a pity for Cox because he's won the medal once before. He won it early on. He kicked five goals in one of his first good games. I can't and remember that. Yeah, you? I remember he came on 360 that night afterwards. And it was a big moment in his in his career and his life. Yeah. And so to, to have won the Neil Danaher twice would have been a, a great thing for him. Yeah. But yeah, it depends what you want to measure in the game, whether you want weight of possession or just whether you want pure influence. I thought Cox turned the game for Collingwood. If you're watching the game without stats, I wonder whether Oliver's in your votes. That that that's the discussion. We're not we're not denigrating his he, him as a player or anything like that. So don't don't come at us just yet. But if you're sitting at the, at the game where you're just saying, "Oh, Oliver again, Oliver again." Some of his stuff is, is is done by stealth. It's so it's it's in tight and it's in traffic and you don't really see it. That's why I thought Pendlebury was so influential. His touches they just they open up the passages of play. Anyway, we all see it differently. All right. Was the, the was the next most significant game of the weekend the Brisbane Lions and St Kilda because of where they were on the ladder and because of where it fits in preliminary final. Integrity. So let's run PFI over the Lions and the Saints, shall we? Yeah, and and, and I've been we've been hard on the Lions, and we've been hard on Harris Andrews. So I've been waiting for Harris to to take a scalp, not 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 be the intercept marker or the intercept player, but to take a scalp. So there's no bigger challenge than Max King. You know, he's he's the he's the one. If you're if you're out of a bit of form one on one, he he can he can destroy you. I thought it was old school. Harris Andrews on the weekend. He he only had the four intercepts for the game. He wasn't interested in in intercepting the ball. He was diffusing and defeating Max King. Yep. He went everywhere with him. Spoiled on every you know, every one on one. Got beaten a couple of times. You're going you're going to get beaten. I think they went to King nine times. 
um, and he took a couple of marks inside 50, but it was never really the dominant threat that we'd seen the previous few months. So I think that's the biggest win of the weekend is Harris Andrews back in form as a one-on-one defender because I think Chris Fagan goes to him today and says, mate, that is what I need. That, that's the Harris Andrews I love, that guy. And then and we can we can work for other people to do a bit more and, and cover you a little bit. But if you can beat the best, we're away. We're away. So I think they're a different looking side with Harris, Harris Andrews playing like that. If he wants to be the zone off in a set, he's so gettable. And we've, we've shown it the last few weeks and it's been against lesser ranked opponents. So it hasn't really hurt as much. Yep. But that, to me, if he plays like that, they, they, they go to top of the pops. They, they had leaked from stoppage or that their defensive work in their midfields had been highlighted clearly internally. Lockie Neal told us that. So what did they concede three points from clearance in the game? So that yeah. we saw what that focus looked like, didn't we? Yeah. And again, when you're a really good top, uh, side, top four in the comp, you, you get over, over analyzed. You get, you get a heavy critique because we're looking for flaws that are going to be exposed in a final series. It's the reason this season stopped last year when it did. Okay, so McCluggage giving a, f- a little bit of leg rope to someone. Lockie Neal giving a little bit of leg rope. They don't have that Trent Cotchin style midfielder that's prepared to just shut down uh, the opposition's best. They, they don't have that. Um, they don't know if they need it, and maybe they don't. So when they're all defensively geared and, and, and ready to play, perhaps they don't. But, but there's, a, there's a big gap between their best and their worst in terms of what they allow. So three points, neither here nor there. They, they, they smashed them for inside 50. They had 60 inside 50s on the weekend. So it was the complete performance. Jared Lyons was very good. Lockie Neal, very good. You know, they've, they've, they don't want for talent. It's just, it's, to, me, to me with Brisbane, it's just an attitude thing. Park, the, it, we've had this discussion about Melbourne 18 months ago. Don't worry about the individual awards. Don't worry about all those, those yeah. little, little markers along the way. Go and get yourself a premiership. If you, know, if you play like Harris Andrews did yesterday, uh, sorry, not yesterday, on the weekend, and Jared Lyons did on the weekend, just everything team first, 100% team first, and, and, and they'll be there. When the whips are cracking, they'll be there. The other side of, of the matchup, Max King. So he he lacks for a partner in crime, doesn't he? As yeah. Mackay, Kerno, Hawkins and Cameron, uh, they don't have the luxury of that yet at St Kilda. No, but for some reason, I, st- I still lo- I still like the way they play. Mm-hmm. I, st- I, st- I still think I still think there's 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 an opportunity to do something special this year for the, for this group. You know, they, they were they were banged up severely late in that game, injuries everywhere, um, and, and it was just it was just one of those nights where they they for whatever reason it wasn't working for them, it wasn't going to happen. Um, I thought their back line they, they looked a bit um, rabbit in the spotlight a little bit. They got run down a few times. I think there was ten free kicks inside the Brisbane forward fifty to Brisbane. You don't, you just don't see that yeah. number ten. Yep. It's a lot. So they weren't as fluent as they'd normally been. So that's one. You, it's tough to go to Brisbane and bring home the four points. But they, they didn't lose any admirers for for what they did in terms of their effort and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, we just say okay, didn't get the job done, but things are in pretty good order for the Saints. The curiosity, I think Richmond is the curiosity as to whether you want to buy in totally. So this is a team that is sitting ninth. There's a few markers that you could go, they are about to storm their way through. When they fell behind in the last quarter on Thursday night, thinking, mm, right, and it was a it was a slugfest at that stage. But I did come away thinking they couldn't have won by less. Yeah. Like they won by 12 points and they couldn't have won by less. Hello to Shea Bolton on that front. Um, do you want to buy into Richmond or not? And you sort of, I reckon you, as an observer, you have to decide before they play Carlton, you got to plant your flag. You got to, you got to go early, do you? I reckon you plant All your right. flag before the Carlton game. Yes or no? Uh, are they storming toward being right at the pointy end of contention or are they going to slug away in the eight? Who's your best player, Jared? Health. Health's your best player, and Dusty Martin may not be there on Thursday night. Yeah, but okay, so he's not there. Th- but he, it's but only he's, a one. He, yeah. It's only a one, isn't it? Yeah. They, they're going to be at full strength, whether it's this Thursday or the next week. It doesn't. Yeah, let's not worry too much. If they're at full strength for the last eight weeks, look out. 
and, and that goes for any of them, really. Any of the teams that are around the top of the table, if you if you can get yourself back to to full health. I mean, we talked about the dogs all year, about you know that Josh Bruce, the lack of that tar- second target down there to help Norton. They're a different team if they had that. So look, Richmond being at full health now it is a massive advantage, and their game's in great order. So what? We talked to Damien Harbick in the pregame. He said, look, I've now got the luxury of using him short where I want to use him. If I, you know, I start him at half back, and if I need him to go in the middle, I know he can do it. Let's throw him in the middle. I've got Baker. I can go forward, back, on board. He can go wherever he wants. And game in the balance, Baker goes and has a dozen touches in the last quarter and changes everything. And you go, well, this is what we're talking about. So if you don't have absolute full health, you're struggling for that extra magnet, that extra player that you can plug and play. And you, you, you're servicing younger players that don't have that, – that are going to give up more than they're going to give you. You know, like Gibkus, he can move around a little bit. Not working, okay, throw Bolter back, Gibkus forward. He's done that the last couple of weeks with, with instant success. So this is this is the, the luxury that, that Damien Harbick has now that he hasn't had for half the year. So I, I, I love where they're going and what they're doing. I, I'm, I'm still, I still think they're a bit behind the others, and, and that's just maybe we're late. To, you know, there's always a delay, Jared. Um, but their their intercept game, so the average is seventy. You, you win the ball back seventy times a game, and you score from seventy percent of those intercepts. That's how you build your score. Okay, seventy and seventy. They're up over eighty. They're they're, they're low eighties over the last six weeks. There's something like averaging eighty two, eighty three intercepts a game. Now you can't lose if you do that. You're just not letting the opposition play. Yep. So eighty three intercepts, it, it it builds ten to fifteen percent greater score than the AFL average. And away they go. So so now the old discussion will come back. They're not clearance reliant. It's a bonus if they win them and they'll force you into turnover. That That's Richmond and we're seeing it again. So get Lynch back in there and all of a sudden there's targets everywhere. And Bolton kicks those goals. I mean, it was a five, it was a, probably a, what, a six, seven goal win really that, that on the scoreboard told a different story. Yeah. And when they fell behind, you go, oh, you wouldn't want to be coughing this game up from yeah. this point. I, it, Tom has sent through the most exciting phrase of the week, I think. This is the best sentence in football right now. If Carlton beats Richmond, Carlton will be equal ladder leaders with Brisbane, <laughs> Melbourne and Fremantle, who all have the bye this weekend. What a thrilling prospect right, that is. Well, put yourself on the line. Quarter past 10, Monday, uh, Tuesday morning. Who are you tipping? Where are you going? Oh, I, I have a slight leaning towards Carlton. No, you just don't, there aren't slight leanings. It's not what we do here. Well, no, there's, slight, there's a little bit to play. I, I, as matters stand, I'll be tipping Carlton. <laughs> Will you? Yep. Wow. So I'm I'm just going to be a fraction slower to Richmond. I can see it. I can see what you're saying, but I'm just going to be a fraction slower till they do it against the quality opposition. Yeah. No, I, I'll probably be the other way. I can. See, I, I think Carlton are winning. They're, they're winning, but they're not playing their best. Yes, yes. There wasn't a whole lot. There are only phases on Friday night. Yeah. But phases this is the, the this is the grip on stage for them. So I, they've got to split their next four against these lofty opponents or maybe maybe West Coast in there. So they I think four of their next five are against really good opponents. I just, I think they've got to split them. I don't actually think they have to be any better than that. They've just got to split them. But Richmond on Thursday night stands is yeah, a big one. It'll be a ripper. Uh, and the, the, the games, Ross was just showing me at the back. The round 15 clashes. Once we're all playing again. Are unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, are unreal. So, no, it's it's going to be an exciting back half of the year. But um, you, you look at Carlton and, and what they've been able to do, if they can hold up without weedering for mm. a little while. And there's a lot rests on on, on Young and, the, and, yeah, the, and that, these like guys. That's a big if. Yeah. So, Split this phase while yeah. they wait for him to get that's, back. That's a fair call. That's a fair call. But they were up, they were up against the bombers. Let's just keep it in in check. A little, yes, Jared. they'll be they're in the means test. We've yeah. got the pressure index in the debate. So two young stars of the competition are in focus next on the Tuesday means test. The pressure index really clearly sits with Jason Horn Francis, who is he is having a hard first year in footy, and the team circumstance is part of that. And then very individually on Sunday, he ends up with a two-match suspension mm. as a result of it. It's been, it's been building for a little while, Jared. You know, and he's a young player, and, and everyone loves what he's doing in terms of the way he's playing. But there are some some warts in his game as well that he needs to change. He needs to, you know, he, he just stops. He, he's invest, invested in a contest and then just stops. I don't know if I've seen a player do that before. 
Like it's all power and then he just stops and the ball will move past him. It'll be three metres from him and someone will exit the area and he'll just be stationary. And then 10 seconds later, something won't go his way and he'll abuse a teammate. And you go, well, hang on. Cornelio at a stoppage. He's your man, Jason. Doesn't chases the footy. Cornelio stands still. Ball comes to him, snaps a goal. We go, well, hang on. Ten seconds ago, you're abusing someone for doing something slightly wrong, making an error, and you're making errors as well. I'm not sure you've earned the right to be to be abusing anyone. Now, everyone says, oh, it's frustration, and he's a high achiever, and he's he's never been involved in losing and all that sort of stuff. That that all that may be correct, but part of development. Is, is 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 prying information out of the senior core players that you're playing with. Now, whether you whether you follow that information or follow their guide with preparation or anything that rounds your game, you're mad not to use it. So to be abusing all your teammates it serves no purpose. And and I think this has been going on for a couple of months now. And it came to a head on the weekend. And we we'd had this the halftime argument with 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 Todd Goldstein was about a hit-out not sort of going in the absolute spot that he wanted it. Now, the hit-outs are hit-outs. They never go in. There's more hit-outs to disadvantage than there are to advantage. That, that's just a hit-out. He didn't have a clearance at halftime, and I reckon the kangaroos tried to hit the ball to him 15 times. So so at some point, just just do your job. Do your job. He's He's, I think... The management of of Jason Hall Francis has failed him this year. Not 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 that it's about re-signing, but but allowing this kid to just focus on being an eighteen year old, new into the system, first year player, concentrate on your craft. Don't worry about the finances and contract talks on hold and being this and being that, all the other stuff going back to Adelaide. Was he allowed to? Was he allowed to? Protocols, all this sort of stuff. All that stuff, I, I think. They've failed with that. Now, whether that's him, his manager, the North Melbourne Footy Club, wh- whoever it is, and now you find yourself in a position. Some people say, "Oh, you, you can't really, you can't talk tough with him because you want to hang on to him." No, you've you got no other option. You've got to, you, you, whether he leaves or stays, you've still got to try and shape him into the best version of himself. Now, if that's dropping him for a week or two because of this stuff, well, so be it. And if it costs you the player, well, you know what? So be it. But I, I do think he, he's, he's had the toughest th- first three months uh, for a number one pick for a long time. Yep. And I think he needs to sit down with someone like Nathan Buckley, who was a perfectionist when they started the game and then through the school of hard knocks really changed his ways and become a better version of himself in the back half of his career, become a Hall of Famer. We, we, we always loved watching him play and what he was able to do, but Nathan at the end of his career was the, the ultimate team man. You know, and embraced the imperfections of those around him rather than pointing out the imperfection of those around him, which he did at the start of his career. So if, if I was Jason or, or, or his management, I'd be trying to get a coffee with Nathan Buckley. So how, how did you do it? What did you see? How did you handle, you know, th- this challenge and that challenge and talking to your teammates? And, 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 and you know you're better than them, but how did you handle that, that you know, living with that and playing with that? Because right now, the kangaroos, there's, 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 there's talent there that he's going to blow past if he hasn't already. So there's, there's a huge, there's, there's, there's an elephant in the room that they don't want to address, really. And I don't think they can be afraid of losing the kid. If you, if you need to treat him a certain way, you treat him that way. And if he chooses to leave, well, so be it. But the management of this kid is, yeah, not, he needs to take some responsibility as well. Yep. And it all come to a head on the weekend. So he's got two weeks. There are ways to challenge this and see if he can get it reduced to one. If he were north, would you just take it and sit him down and say, this is what we're doing here and this is how to use the intervening weeks? I would have a temptation to do that. I don't think I'd quibble around the edges. You could you could go to the tribunal and see if you can get it reduced from two to one. I think if I was in charge, I'd sit him down and say, we're not going to do this for this reason. Yeah. And here's what we need to do across these intervening weeks together. Yeah. I don't know whether you could do two to one. I hadn't thought of that, but and I hadn't hadn't heard that until just then. But yeah, I think it's a two week offence, really. You know, you can't be doing that sort of stuff, and he needs to learn a bit of a lesson. But it's it's bigger than that. It, you know, fast track this kid's development. 
accept the flaws of those around you and get on with playing the game at your best. Because even even himself, he hasn't been – he's been an impact player. He's had impact in patches of games. But he hasn't been a dominant player in any game this year. Not one game this year. So we, we've seen others do it from that draft. Um but I can't, I can't say which aim did he absolutely yeah. rip apart just yet. So he's no longer eligible for the rising star, but he's not in the top five votes. If you sat down and wrote down the five, he's not in them. Mm. Oh, I can't I couldn't imagine anyone could wedge him in to the best five in the rising star right now, and that's mm. disappointing. It is, yeah. But again, I, I think it's because of other things. Yep. They've allowed other things to get on top of him. Yep. Just let the kid play. And you know what? Deliver. Deliver on your talents. Prepare well. Listen. Two ears, one mouth, Jared. There's a ratio that you need to adopt. <laughs> There's a bit of Mike Sheenism coming through yeah. there. So, where are you pulled in this debate, Kingy? Uh, well, I, I'm not really the mental health stuff. I think you just got to respect it. You've got to ex- just accept that what people are telling you is the truth, and, and work with it. And if you get hoodwinked from time to time, well, that's just part of it, isn't it? So, so I'm not going to argue that or or, or 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 get involved in that greatly. And I'm sure that I'll be, I'll be dudded along the way, at some point. I think the all the policies are that old; they are outdated. They are no longer part of the current societal standards and acceptances. Um, I think it was 2015 that was when the the drug protocols were put in place. And then the the adjustment was three strikes down to two. Yeah, the strike thing. Well, really, you know, has that made a massive? Has that rocked your world? The strikes three down to two. No, there's there's always been loopholes in that, which yeah. I think we've we've understood. So I I, I just think you need to be uh, be real about it, you know. So what does real mean? So I, I frankly I think it's disturbing that Jeff Kennett has this zero tolerance policy where he thinks it should be two years. I think it would be an incredible disservice from the game to a player like Bailey Smith in this circumstance if it was a two year ban. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I, I like I like hard and fast rules, though. Okay, so I'm not silly enough to 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 think that Bailey Smith's the only person in the AFL that's finding himself in this situation. He he's in this situation because of the photo and the video. Outside of the photo and the video, what percentage of of players or, or or young people or wherever you want to go with it are getting involved in this sort of stuff? I I, I accept that it's a it's a high percentage. And that the, the punishment really is only for the, the photo on the video. So does the code really help us outside of that? Because ultimately we're, we're, fi- we're suspending someone because of a photo on a video, not because of the code. So you'd have to answer me, and I don't know this, is has the code helped Bailey Smith from December through to presenting into the season and playing excellent footy? So I'm going to presume that this wasn't news to anybody mm. on Saturday morning mm. and that this has been actively dealt with. And did the the code in the way that it is prioritizing the health of Bailey Smith through those months, did it actually help him and then present him into the football season ready to be an asset for his team? And if it did, then I could make the case that that was, that was a successful application of the code. And then once it becomes public, you serve your time for bringing the game into disrepute. Yeah, so you, you think the code impacted Bailey's... I, I'm, I'm open to the idea that it did. Yeah, I, I, I would challenge that. I, I would think that no one would question Bailey if we hadn't seen a photo or a video. So do, you, um, so do you think it was news to the Bulldogs on Saturday morning? I don't know. I, I don't know whether it was or it wasn't. They may have had that discussion internally. They, they may not have. And there may be a hundred of these discussions going across yes. the league that we don't know about. So are we... Are we Worried about other players around the, around the place? Or are we going to worry when there's a photo comes out? Well, I think the, the job of the medical professionals is to worry about each of them along the way. And then once if it becomes public, then it gets publicly dealt with. Mm. So I think probably somewhere down the track, this becomes an interesting case study. It's just we're not privy to enough information to yeah, know whether that's true. Bailey Smith's personal circumstances across what we take it was a relatively traumatic period for him in the way that he tells it, whether it actually served him well and guided him out of that rather than what would have been the this level of public shaming when he was at his most vulnerable. Yeah, I, I, I think that the, the drug 
um, protocols or the strike system, I don't think it works. I, 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 I challenge anyone to show me how it works, how it's been effective. How? How's it been effective? I, I, I just, I don't understand. And the, the guys that, there's loopholes everywhere that we all accept are just, you have to have. Um, and then we have something like this and, the, and everyone throws their arms in the air and, oh, the players, you know, they're, they're role models, they shouldn't be doing this, shouldn't be doing Well, we get all that. But but I'm not naive to think that if you want to walk into a nightclub on Saturday night, Jared, you, you'll see this. You know, so it's 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 not a Bailey Smith issue. It's 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 an everywhere. It's a full societal issue. At working on the basis that he'll serve a couple of weeks suspension, which seems to be where this lands, mm. and it'll be after he's done his headbutt suspension. So for the Bulldogs who are trying to mount a challenge from tenth, um, it's a big setback. Yeah, it is because I think this guy can be the best player in the comp. And you know, we've talked about him a lot this year. His ability to get. High volume disposals. We're talking forty plus regularly. You know, he's he, he he's he's a gun. He's not quite getting the damage in his game just yet. And maybe, and maybe you know, maybe we're learning about his other challenges right now. You know, maybe this is good for him for his football. Maybe he comes back a better product. You know, but I, I think that for the dogs, this is this. It's a player you can't replace. You know, he he would be eighteen k's a game, all high speed. He, he, he asks the opposition coach's box continually, does this guy need a tag? Do we need to worry about Smith? He's changing the mindset of, of coaches. So he's he's a loss. There's no doubt about that. And it's, it's, it's at a bad time for the dogs. They need to make every post a winner. A couple of quick ones. What they got right, Nat Fife's return they got spot on and he did as well. I've never seen a club get the pregame right like the Bombers did. That was amazing. That, that was... That was hair on the back of your neck stuff. Yep. Well done. To, to, to everyone, everyone who did that uh, script in the lead up, huge tick to them today. Best pageantry we've seen. Yeah, unreal. Are you in the camp of, did, did Ben Rutten get singling out Jake Stringer wrong? No. Well, where do you sit well, here? I heard Ben Dixon uh, gave him a good clip. I was sitting next to him when he did it. And, and I can understand their, their angle on that. One guy got named. Over the last six weeks, they've named one guy. So I understand the discussion, but I don't mind it. I, I think coaches, we, we don't put too many handbrakes on them. Let them speak. We're, we're getting great access at the moment from all of our coaches. They're prepared to talk. They're prepared to let us in a little bit on what the, the real truth is behind the scenes. So if you feel that way about one of your players, hey, I'm, I'm all for it. Let us know. I, I, I don't necessarily have to agree with it or disagree with it, yeah. but... You know, I thought it was a bit unfair on Jake first game back and all those sorts of things. But when Jake doesn't have any other foundation to his game, it's all ripped, tear and bust, winning the ball. Outside of that, there's nothing else. Nothing defensively, no pressure, no roll up to help. So when you're not doing the first part, you have no involvement in the game. So that's where he's, he's nailing him. I've got no doubt he's challenging him on the rest of his game. What else are you bringing? Because at the moment, that's the sickness in the whole footy club. Mm. So we bring you in and we get worse. So we, we need more of more of your brilliance or if you're not bringing that, we need something else of substance. Seedings for Red Energy, moving house, call local energy retailer Red Energy. And to your credit, you are ahead of the game here, David King. We've sort of had moments where our seedings have yeah. been a bit. But last week you demoted Melbourne. You were Fremantle, Geelong, Melbourne and the Brisbane Lions. What say you? Best two words in footy, Jared. No change. No change. No change. I'm, I'm sticking yeah. with that until I... until either Geelong let me or maybe Geelong are maybe too high at two, but I'm going to roll with it. I think okay. they're coming and coming hard. Well, I have adjustments to make. Oh, what Actually, do you got? adjustments doesn't what do you really got? do it justice, does it? <laughs> yeah. It's got to be shake up time. <laughs> what do you got? The most exciting phrase in footy. Yeah. That Tom shared it earlier. If Carlton win on Thursday night, they are equal top of the ladder. And that has them a place in fourth. Fourth. Seedings. Okay. Yep. You had me excited there. I thought you were going higher. Right. I'm going to sit them fourth. Carlton and should fourth. they win, then they might slide up and up and up. Oof. So I think you're right. As Melbourne have to sit three, they can't occupy three. one of those positions so they've anymore. They've dropped two on yours. Yeah, yeah. I Once like you lose it. three in a I like row, it. I like it. Um, to you know a variance of. 
opponent. And you pay a price. And in different ways, you have to pay a price. You pay a price on the Waitley seedings, I'm telling so, you. Boom, boom. you. Start losing. Oof. Down to third. Who's your two? Well, I put the Brisbane Lions at two and Fremantle at one. And the tiebreaker clearly is Fremantle beat both the Lions and Melbourne in recent weeks. So that does give them the one seeding. You were you were right. No Geelong. Not yet. Not yet for me. No, uh, no Sydney for me yet. St Kilda lost the play-in game. Yeah. I, I, you and play, them the lure. Playing I'm game. a playing guy. <laughs> so Carlton are in pending what their Richmond play-up Carlton? game. Yeah, well, that, so that's a really interesting question. Do they get in? Should we make that a play-in game? Could they vault through? You get a lot of play-in games. I, 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 get, I like one every week. I lose my mind. It gives it a nice hook. I don't know who I want to win when I'm watching the footy <laughs> with you. So we are. So you're Fremantle, Geelong, Melbourne, Brisbane. Yep. I'm Fremantle, Brisbane, Melbourne, Carlton. Can Melbourne recover, Jared? Is the question. They, they can. <laughs> the question is, will they? When? And when our seedings powered by Snowy Hydro, a leader in renewable energy, switch to Aussie owned energy today.